Welcome to Candid Conversation number 267. I was asked the question, is Satan lazy or is he very active? The answer is that he is very active. Peter says that Satan goes to and fro, roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. The book of Job, chapter 1, Satan and the devils report to God, and God asks him, what have you been doing? And he says, I've been going up and down the earth, walking to and fro in it. Job chapter 2 reports again, says the exact same thing. I've been going up and down the earth, walking to and fro. The Satan says that he will be like the Most High God. He will possess heaven and earth. He will ascend to the sides of the north. You can think sort of like a politician. If a politician wants to become president. That politician has to work very hard. If he just sits around, doesn't say anything, doesn't do anything, doesn't go anywhere, there's no press about him, people don't know who he is. So he doesn't get the votes. Satan is the god of this world. He possesses the kingdoms of this world. He wants to be like the Most High God, who is a possessor of heaven and earth. In order for him to be the possessor of heaven and earth, God gave dominion of the earth to man. The dominion of heaven, God gave over to the man Christ Jesus. Well, ultimately, he gave both the dominion of earth and heaven over to the man Christ Jesus. And then all those who are saved, who are in Christ, uh, end up being part of that if you're in the body of Christ, then you're part of Christ in heavenly places. If you are the bride of Christ, you're uh, part of Israel, then you are part of Christ and the earth, have dominion over the earth. So it's a war between God and Satan. Satan wants to be the possessor of heaven and earth. He knows that God has given that possession over to man. And so Satan is very active trying to get possession of heaven and earth. If Satan was not active, then he has given up. And another thing to note about Satan is that what, what, well, how he differs from God, one of the main ways he differs is that God is everywhere. Whereas Satan is a cherub. He is the anointed cherub that covereth, or he was the anointed cherub that covereth. Now he's transformed himself into an angel of light. But either way, he is one creature. And so he is one creature trying to get eight billion people not to be saved and not to come into the knowledge of the truth. And he's just like a president. He has to, he can only be in one place at one time, but he's gotta control the entire world. And so he's got to have his minions, the devils, doing his work. So Satan is a strategist. He's always looking at the situations, seeing how they've changed and how they're different and how he can use... Ephesians 2 talks about how the children of disobedience, those who are unsaved, operate by the course of this world. And... 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 calls Satan the God of this world. So if he is the God of this world and he has established a course by which 8 billion, approximately 8 billion people are going to where his goal is for them to not believe the gospel not be saved. There in 2 Corinthians 4 it talks about if our gospel be hid, it is hid because Satan hath blinded the minds of the heart and the hearts of the people. Lest, they sh lest the light of the glorious gospel should come in, they should hear it and believe. Satan is very active in trying to blind hearts and minds 
so that you do not believe the gospel. The reason people think he's lazy is because he operates in a different realm. We are told in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. We are told that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are spiritual through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Ephesians 6 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are involved in a spiritual battle. We're wrestling against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But yet, we don't actually see that. This spirit, we operate as Christians, we operate in the spirit realm. And we are going against Satan's spiritual attacks. That's not to say that Satan personally attacks every single person. Because remember, he's got 8 billion people in the world. And he's only one cherub. Now he's got the, the devils with him. That's a third of the angelic realm sided with Satan according to Revelation 12. But still, that's a lot of work. That's why he tells Job, or he tells God, in Job 1 and Job 2, where have you been? I've been going walking to and fro in this land. That's what you do when you when you own a land. You know, if you own a piece of land, you have a house on it, you own that piece of land, well, you take care of it. You walk up and down it, you mow the grass, you edge, you uh, make sure you know, there isn't an invasion. You put up a wall to protect it, a fence. You, um, you protect your land. Well, that, what do you have? A house and a, and a piece of land? Maybe you have an acre of land? That's nothing compared to the entire world. Satan says the entire world is mine. He says, I'm possessor of heaven and earth. No, he knows that Jesus Christ won the victory on the cross, but he knows that when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, so all Israel shall be saved. So Israel can't be saved till the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So he, if he can stop the fullness of the Gentiles from being from coming in, then he can win. And the closer it gets to the fullness of the Gentiles coming in, Satan works harder. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why? Because Satan and his forces are trying to keep people from believing their Bibles and walking in it. Because if you do that, then you are prepared to take positions in heavenly places. The fullness of the Gentiles comes in. Satan no longer controls the, controls the world. But the Lord Jesus Christ controls it through the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. So 2 Timothy 3.12 says, All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And then the next verse says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Satan gets them to be deceived. He deceives them and gets them to deceive others. And it gets worse and worse. So as the time draws nigh for the fullness of the Gentiles to be come in, as Satan sees more and more people qualified for the heavenly positions, he works harder and harder to keep it from happening. It's like if you are you are a boss, let's say you own a business and you have a hundred employees, and you see more and more people, you know, and let's say all the hundred employees are your relatives, so you want to keep them all in there. They're the ones that um, you want to keep in there, but then you see more and more people all around you learning the business and doing better than you were doing. Well, then you want to try to put a stop to that so that you and your employees continue to do the job that you're doing and no one hurts your business. So you try to put down the competition. That's what Satan does. He sees these people who believe God and His Word. And he says, man, they're qualified to take our positions now. 
and instead of doing things for evil, they're going to do it for good. They're going to believe God and His Word. And so I got to put a stop to this. And so He blinds the minds and hearts of people so they won't be saved. And if they are saved, so they won't come into the knowledge of the truth. Just over my short lifetime, I've seen the world and how they've gotten far, the, the churches, Christian churches, have gotten farther and farther away from the truth. When I was growing up, it was very common for churches to use the King James Bible. Now it's very rare for that. It was very common for people to preach about hellfire. You never hear that today. It was very common for the blood of Christ and Christ's death on the cross to be taught. It's not taught as much today. Satan and his forces are working hard. So if evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, then what that means is that Satan is working harder and harder to try to get people so they don't be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. A good example of that is halfway through the tribulation period, Revelation 12 mentions that Satan and his angels fight against Michael and his angels. And the devil and his angels are cast out. Neither is there found neither is there found any more place in heaven. No place found for them in heaven anymore. They're kicked out of their positions in heavenly places. And the church, the body of Christ, enters in those positions. So then when it says, Rejoice ye heavens, for the accuser who accused the brethren day and night is cast down. That right there tells you he works hard. He's accusing the brethren day and night. It's like, what do you do if you own a business and you've got a thriving business and all of a sudden this other business comes in? You fight. Right now, for example, Amazon is doing very well online, taking business from Walmart. Well, Walmart doesn't just sit back and be lazy. They're fighting against it. They're coming up with ways that they can combat Amazon and not lose their business. And that's what Satan's doing with the church, the body of Christ. He sees people saved and they come into the knowledge of the truth. He sees people qualified for the positions in heavenly places. And he fights hard to keep that from happening. Because he knows he wants to be the possessor of heaven and earth. And he knows he can't be that if, if Jesus Christ and those who are in Christ are complete enough to take over his him and the devil's rules of authority the positions of authority and so he's accusing the brethren day and night he's trying to say to god there oh brother so and so or sister so and so they're not qualified they would they can't they can't do those jobs you don't have anybody to replace me you're stuck with me basically is what he's saying he's accusing them day and night he's working hard to keep the body of Christ to keep people from being saved and coming into the knowledge of the truth even in the days of Job there's old Job God says to Satan have you considered my servant Job he's upright he's just righteous before me Satan says oh no he's not if I was to take away his positions, he would curse you. Possessions, he would curse you. And he takes away his possessions, Job doesn't curse him. He says, oh, if I take away his health, he would curse you. And he's fighting. He's fighting to keep the one man that God has identified as righteous. He's fighting to keep Job from being worthy of working with Christ as a possessor of heaven and earth. So anyway, back in Revelation 12, so Satan is the accuser of the brethren day and night before God in heavenly places. And then we're told, once he is cast out of heaven, when Michael and his angels defeat him, Satan's cast into the earth, and it says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil and his angels have been cast down and he has great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. That's why evil men and seducers wax worse and worse as you get closer and closer to the rapture. The devil's counting. Yeah, let's say there are, I don't know, let, I just make up a number. Let's say there are 
uh, two million positions in heavenly places that Satan and his angels occupy. Well, as he sees people being saved and coming to the knowledge of the truth, he's calculating, figuring out, well, we had two million places. Well, now, after all this time, there's a million and a half of those positions that God has people to fill. Now we only have 500,000. Once he gets to 500,000 there, then the rapture is going to take place and we're going to be kicked out of heavenly places. So Satan says, I got to stop that from happening. As long as I can stop all of that from happening, Ephesians 1 says that Christ is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. If he can't fill all in all, if he can't take the church, the body of Christ, and fill all the heavenly posi positions with us, then Satan wins. The heavens continue to be unclean in God's sight. Satan and his forces continue to occupy those positions. And so Satan looks at it and he says, I got to work harder and harder. I got to look to see what deceptions have worked in the past. And I got to use those, uh, a greater concentration of those highly effective attacks. And I get rid of the things that didn't work as well. So that's why they wax worse and worse. The deception program of Satan only gets fine-tuned. It only gets better with time. So that he can keep, if he can keep people from being saved, there aren't that many people who get saved every generation anyway. And so if he can just cut it off completely, then he wins. And he's just got to get, that's, that's why Satan continues to fight and continues to believe that he is going to win. Why he's been fighting for 6,000 plus years is because he knows it's sure Jesus Christ won the victory on the cross, conquered sin and death. But if no one believes the gospel, then no one gets saved. So there's two sides of it. There is what Jesus Christ did on the cross, but then there's also the free will of man. And if he can get it to the point where no one believes, then he wins. And that's why in 2 Timothy 3.13, when it says evil men and seducers show wax worse and worse, that's why you get three verses later. It says that um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. The one thing that keeps Satan from winning is the Word of God. The Word of God is eternal, it is perfect, it is uncorrupted, and it effectually worketh in those that believe. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 And so if he can get, if Satan can get people not to believe God's Word, then they're not saved and he ends up winning. So it gets worse and worse as the time grows shorter. And then after he is kicked out of heaven, then he concentrates all his forces on the earth. And it says there in Revelation 12, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. The devil and his angels have come down unto you, and they know they have but a short time. And so they are going to be working very hard to try to keep. They know that God has said at that time that there's three and a half years left, and then Jesus is going to come back and all Israel will be saved. So basically Satan knows that if he can keep the earthly positions, governmental positions of God from being filled by Israel during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period, then he wins. It's all a delay tactic with Satan. Because God is no longer God once he breaks just one of his promises. Once God does not keep his word in one place, then God has fallen and Satan's policy of evil wins. And God's promise that the Antichrist will have 40 and two months where he will rule over, uh, rule over the world. That last three and a half years of the tribulation period. And so Satan knows that if he can keep all Israel being saved, 
during those last three and a half years, then he's going to win. Because even if, you know, even if God took longer, let's say it took him 20 years instead of three and a half, well, God's broken his promise. He didn't fulfill his word. The 70 weeks of Daniel is not true because it took longer than what he said. We even hear there in Matthew 24, it says, the elect will be saved, but God has to shorten the time, meaning he shortens it to the end of the tribulation period there. He doesn't allow the tribulation period to go on more than seven years, and the great tribulation doesn't go on for more than three and a half years. Because if it kept going on, it says no flesh would be saved. Why? Because Satan is working incredibly hard. And if he can get people not to believe, they have to endure until the end in order to be saved, Satan wins. So there's this delicate balance in which God has said that man is going to, Israel is going to be saved and it's during this certain time period and he has to allow this tribulation to go on in, for, in order for them to be saved. But at the same time, if the tribulation gets too hard, they're going to be deceived and then no one will be saved. Now, there's nothing to worry about because God in his foreknowledge knows exactly what time period is needed and that's why he identifies it in the Bible and he knows it will work and so God will win in the end and we know that. But Satan's an unbeliever. He doesn't believe the Bible. And so Satan knows if he can just get God to fail in just one little area, then he will win. And so Satan continues to work very hard. Again, people may think he's lazy because you don't see him working hard. You don't see what's going on in the spiritual. I am spiritually circumcised. I'm spiritually baptized into de the, the death of Christ. I am risen with Christ. I am seated together with Christ in heavenly places. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But if I don't look at God's word and I just look at circumstances and what's going on in my life to determine it, I wouldn't determine that. I don't physically see in this material world any of my spiritual blessings in Christ. I don't physically see the forgiveness of sins. I don't physically see me being risen together with Christ in heavenly places. Because it's in the spiritual realm, not in the material realm. So Satan, you don't physically see Satan attacking. You don't see him you know, killing millions of people and, and uh, doing all these evil things. You just see the results of it. You see all these different Bible perversions. You see a clear gospel is rarely preached. You see sound doctrine rarely being taught in churches. And you see how corrupt the church system is as a whole. And that's because Satan has worked very hard to get to deceive man into being so. When, when God gave the promise, the dominion of the earth to man, we see in Genesis 3 that Satan went to Eve and got her to take of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, eat it and also give to Adam and he ate. And then we've been under the curse of sin ever since. And Satan has continued to work hard. You through, look throughout Scripture and see, but God made a promise to Abraham of giving him the land. It says the Canaanite was in the land. And you see Satan over the next 400 year, years filling that land with the seed of the devil, with these giants that were in the land where um, devils had sex with women to create these giants in the land. That was Satan working hard behind the scenes in the spiritual realm to get them to do that, to keep God from fulfilling his promises. So today in the dispensation of grace, when God says he's blessed with, us, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, Satan is working behind the scenes very hard to keep us from actually obtaining that. He is doing everything he can to corrupt the heavenly places, to get man not to believe the gospel. That's why he says the light of the glorious gospel is hid from the hearts and minds of those who don't believe because Satan has blinded them. You don't actually see Satan with a big light shining in people's faces to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, but you do see you go into a church 
gospel isn't taught. You ask somebody how to be saved, you don't get a, the correct answer. You try to recognize your sin and the generation today doesn't recognize sin as worth. They don't even know what sin is. Just read an article last week and a, a child, little daughter, told her mom, said something about, learned about sin and said, what is sin? And the mother was proud that her daughter didn't know what sin was because according to her, there is no such thing as sin. What a deception. If you don't know there's sin, then you don't need to be saved and all the people who believe there's no such thing as sin are going to hell. And that's all because Satan is working hard to keep people from being saved and coming into the knowledge of the truth so that he can be possessor of heaven and earth. Just like a good politician works hard to get the votes, Satan works hard to keep us from being qualified to fulfill the positions that he and his forces are in so that he may be the possessor of heaven and earth. Thanks for watching.